They lied about carbs. They've told us we're eating too many carbs, that it's preventing us from burning fat and it's the reason we're gaining more and more weight. Humans don't need carbs. And by simply removing carbs from your diet, you lose weight and get healthy. But wait a minute, what if this is not true? What if this is all a big lie? And what if eating carbs is actually good for weight loss? Carb consumption may have increased over the last few decades together with the increase in obesity, making it seem as though eating more carbs is the reason we're gaining excess fat. However, what they usually don't show you is that about 100 years ago, they were eating about the same amount of carbs as we're eating now, yet they were not obese back then. Some try to blame it on sugar specifically, though sugar consumption has both increased and then decreased again, even while obesity was still increasing. Now you may have heard that carbs block you from burning fat because it spikes insulin, which is a hormone that signals to your body to basically not burn fat and even to store more fat. This is true. Though, did you know that insulin can also spike when you eat protein? Plus, it doesn't mean that you'll stop burning fat overall. And it doesn't mean you'll burn fewer calories overall. The thing is, this is only temporary anyway. Once insulin is no longer present, the body can simply go back to burning fat. At least if you have a healthy, well-functioning metabolism. If the insulin theory of obesity was true and that simply eating carbs makes us more likely to gain excess fat, then including carbs in our diet in place of dietary fat should make it more difficult for us to lose weight, right? Well, according to this very controlled study, the opposite is true. If we look at how much body fat was lost, which is of course what we ultimately want, to lose fat mass specifically, right? Actually, even though restricting carbs did lead to less insulin being secreted and an increase in fat oxidation, meaning fat burning, the participants lost more fat on the low fat diet than they did on the low carb diet. Hold on. That doesn't sound right, does it? Though note that yes, fat oxidation increased, though carb oxidation decreased. Naturally, of course, because you're eating way less carbs. So the total energy that you're burning may not change much, just the type of energy, which makes total sense because you provide a different types of energy via your diet. Remember, the fat that your body is burning isn't all from your body fat. Some of it will be fat from your diet. And if you replace that fat with carbs, it'll burn carbs. Now, as with any study, there are limitations. Though what the study does show is that even though you may lower insulin and even increase fat oxidation, it doesn't actually mean you lose more fat. Two other studies found that the amount of carbs in a high protein diet did not affect energy expenditure, meaning people burned the same number of calories when carbs were included in the diet as when they were not. We'll come back to the high protein part later because that's important. Okay, so we have established that simply eating carbs doesn't make us burn fewer calories and therefore gain excess fat. Carbohydrates as a macronutrient are not the issue. Actually, bodybuilders have been using carbohydrates as their main source of fuels for decades, even though their goal right before competitions is to get as lean as humanly possible. Now, this is where it gets especially interesting. I mean, you may still be wondering, should I be eating carbs? From which foods? Can carbs help me lose weight? And when can it be a good idea to limit or avoid carbs? And are there negative side effects of doing that? And we'll get to all of that in a second, though first I know some of you will be wondering what about all those studies that show that people lose more weight on a low carb diet than on a low fat diet? That totally contradicts what we just talked about doesn't it? By the way, if you're enjoying this video, I would really appreciate if you click the thumbs up and make sure you're subscribed to my channel. And for lots more science-based weight loss tips, make sure you follow me on Instagram at vikingingun. Okay, so it is true that there are quite a few studies showing people lose more weight on low-carb diets, and I've talked about this myself. You even have studies where people have lost more than twice as much weight on low-carb diets compared with low-fat diets. And even a very interesting study showing people burn more energy, meaning have a higher metabolism on a very low carb diet compared with a low fat diet. This seems to totally contradict the studies we talked about earlier, right? Well, as you'll know if you've been following me for a while, in studies like that, very often it's not just the carb and fat content 
of the diets that are different. Very often, the low-carb diet is higher in protein, for example, which can be especially satiating and even help you burn more calories for several different reasons. Plus, the type of fat can also be different between those diets. And again, as you'll know if you've been following me, the type of fat can have a big impact on fat mass and fat burning. There are some mind-boggling animal studies on this. The point is, in these studies, you cannot say that it's the lack of carbs that's the reason the low-carb diets work better. I have a video talking about three reasons low-carb diets can work well for weight loss that have nothing to do with the lack of carbs. You might want to check it out because it shows you how you may get some of the greatest benefits often seen with low-carb diets without cutting all carbs. I'll put the link to the video in the description. Okay, so we've seen that simply including carbs in your diet isn't going to make you gain excess fat. And that it's not necessarily the lack of carbs that make people lose more weight on a low carb diet. Though the question still remains, should you be eating carbs or not? Keto people will tell you that humans don't need to consume carbs. And it's true, we can actually produce our own carbs in case we don't get enough via our diet. So we can survive without eating carbs. So the question really becomes, are we better off eating carbs or not? Because I don't know about you, but I don't want to just survive. I want to thrive. I want to look my best, be healthy, feel my best, while also enjoying tasty food. So let's take a look at some pros and cons of avoiding carbs. Low carb and ketogenic diets have been used to help with a range of different health issues. And that's really great, amazing. Though take insulin resistance, for instance, which is a common thread in a lot of different diseases. And I promise I'll explain this as simply as possible. When you're insulin resistant, your body isn't able to respond normally to the hormone insulin. So whenever your body is in need of insulin, it gets into trouble. So if you take away the need for insulin, that becomes less of a problem, doesn't it? Even if it doesn't solve the actual problem the body has with insulin. And that's what a ketogenic diet can do, which is a diet very low in carbohydrates and with limited protein. A diet like that limits the need for insulin, but that doesn't mean it solves the actual problem. The insulin isn't the real problem. The real problem is that the body doesn't respond properly to insulin. Now, some people will tell you that carbs can cause insulin resistance. However, there's no evidence that carbs cause insulin resistance. Actually, fat can cause insulin resistance, though that's a topic for a different video. So there are different scenarios where limiting carbs can be helpful, even if it doesn't solve the underlying problem. So we can use low carb or ketogenic diets as interventions, though ultimately we would want to try to find a solution to the underlying problems so that we can get back to eating carbs without any issues. Because there can also be negative sides of limiting or avoiding carbs, especially over the long run, that are often not talked about. Including that it can put extra stress on the body because the body now needs to produce its own carbs, which is an expensive process. And yes, your body needs carbs, whether you provide it via your diet or not. Your brain, for example, runs on carbs. You may also end up with less thyroid hormone T3, which is an important part of your metabolism. And you may, of course, experience increased cravings. There is a reason why you may find so many keto or low carb recipes trying to mimic carbs. Now on the flip side, there are some amazing benefits of eating carbs, even when it comes to weight loss, including helping to support your thyroid, less stress on the body, fewer cravings, and easier to stick to the diet, which is of course critical for us who live in the real world. So here's what I'm saying. Limiting carbs can work well for some people as an intervention, though I do not believe it's a good thing to do long term or as a lifestyle. However, and this is a big one, where you get your carbs from matters a lot. And so does what you pair them with. Because the thing is, even though carbohydrates as a macronutrient cannot be blamed for the obesity epidemic or for metabolic dysfunction, it's certainly possible to overeat, gain excess fat, and disrupt your metabolism while consuming carbs. Especially, for example, if your body has trouble with insulin or impaired fat burning. However, humans have been consuming carbs for a very long time without it causing 
health problems or making us fat. What has changed is the way we consume carbs, where the carbs come from and what we pair them with. And this can affect anything from our satiety, so that we may be way more likely to overeat, to things like our insulin response and metabolism. So instead of blaming carbs for the obesity epidemic, insulin resistance and other metabolic disorders and completely removing them from our diet, we really should be looking at how to best incorporate them into our diet. And how you do that can depend on where you're at and what your goals are. When it comes to weight loss, for example, that may include avoiding them for a short amount of time while you clean up the rest of your diet. Because remember, carbs are not the enemy here. Though your diet as a whole may be making it more difficult for you to deal with carbs and insulin. So you're going to want to clean that out. Though again, I wouldn't avoid carbs for too long because that could potentially make it even more difficult to lose weight with time. Now, again, if you're looking to lose weight, you're probably also going to want to choose carefully which foods your carbs come from, as well as the proportion of those foods compared with other foods to optimize for satiety, digestion, and more. A great place to start is to simply shift your sources of carbs over to what I call real carbs. That includes foods that are nutritious, low in anti-nutrients, minimally processed and easy to digest, including, for example, fruits, root vegetables, honey, etc. You'll find a list of foods to choose from as well as instructions on how to incorporate these foods into your diet within my 90-day weight loss program. So if you'd like to know step-by-step -step how you may lose weight without removing carbs from your diet, which can help with hormones, metabolism, cravings, variety in your diet and simply enjoying your food more, check out my 90-day weight loss program called Slim by Science at slimbyscience.com. You'll find the link in the description of this video. The bottom line, they lied about carbs. Carbs are not the enemy. The important thing is where your carbs come from, how you incorporate them into your diet, and what you pair them with. If you enjoyed this video, I would really appreciate if you give it a thumbs up and make sure you're subscribed for lots more science-based, no BS weight loss tips and truth. And for those tips on how you may get some of the greatest benefits often seen with low-carb diets without cutting all carbs, check out this video. Talk to you soon.